What's your question? Um, Yeah, oh, it's going good. It's uh, certainly a lot different from the WAC media days in numbers and volume, but uh, everybody's been great so far and just doing the media deal. You know, Coach, this is the third, this is the third time in three years that Tennessee head coach mm -hmm. this year. And I know consistency, I guess something you're looking forward to this program. Well, it's been, it's been a tough two years for the Tennessee fans. There's no question. Uh, this is a program uh, since General Neyland came on campus. It's the winningest program in college football, so they're used to winning. Uh, but they're also used to stability. You look at Coach Major's run and Coach Fulmer's run, uh, they're used to having a coach that's got a little stability going. Uh, and we've taken the opportunity to evaluate all our structures uh, over the last few, few months and uh, really try to implement things that are going to carry us to get back to that stability and get back to that winning. And I feel like we're on our way. Mm -hmm. There's nothing new on the incident. You know, when I made the decisions uh, that I did, it was based on all the credible information I had at the time. Uh, we haven't really gotten any new or different credible information since that time. So we're really in a process of, of waiting to see what any other legal proceedings might happen, if any. Uh, and then pretty soon I expect to get closure on the issue. Yeah. Well, I think it starts with, with me placing some blame on them, too. And I think that shocked them a little bit, you know, because everybody's accountable for each other. Uh, and I think one of the worst things you can have is, well, oh, that guy did that. I, you know, nothing we can do about it. And I think that's part of, that's really what leadership is. You know, we have a lot of good seniors uh, who have a lot of leadership qualities, but to be a leader, it's important you learn to affect others' behavior uh, and affect others' commitment. And uh, so, you know, we, we put as much blame on Nick Revez and Luke Stocker and Chris Walker, the three guys here, as we did on the guys at the scene. Uh, and I think the players understand that now. And uh, hopefully we'll learn from it. We're certainly not going to forget it, uh, but we're going to move forward and make sure it doesn't happen again. Terry, is that what you were talking about when you were talking about changing the culture of the program? I think it's a start. Uh, it's a start. You know, when you talk about changing a culture, uh, the initial part is having a head coach that's going to outline some expectations. And, and we've done that, but that doesn't do anything. It's no different than telling one of your children, you know, don't do this. Well, get ready. Uh, they're going to do it. So uh, then it comes into an educational component, uh, teaching people right and wrong, how to make good choices, uh, how to handle certain situations. There's always a discipline component when we slip up. Uh, and we've implemented a lot of structures to help these guys and support them off the field that I think are going to pay dividends over time. Uh, it's not something that's going to change overnight, uh, but we have made tremendous progress despite uh, the incident that's happened. Well, I'm very close with, with Nick professionally and personally. Uh, you know, spending seven years with him, uh, wearing a lot of different hats. I, uh, he really helped me blossom as a coach. Uh, but we've also developed a good personal relationship off the field, especially since we parted ways professionally. Uh, and I saw him at the lake this summer, and uh, we really enjoy each other's company. And I've, we've talked on the phone several times, and uh, I expect our relationship to continue. Uh, despite the competitive element that's going to be there next fall. Coach, it's not often that you take a team to a venue two years in a row. You go to Tiger Stadium again in Baton Rouge. Talk yeah. about leaving the Tennessee Volunteers into a venue you're very familiar Into Tiger with. Stadium, yeah. Well, it's always fun to be in Tiger Stadium when you're a Tiger. Uh, and I was a Tiger for five years. Uh, but it's always challenging to be in Tiger Stadium when you're not a Tiger. And uh, I've been there a couple of times. And, uh, in fact, at Tech, we were there twice. And the first time, we played really poorly, uh, very disappointing in our effort. And last year, we put on a pretty good fight. And so it's just another one of those great venues in college football. Uh, it's another uh, example of what makes this conference special. And uh, we got a lot of work before then, and we got a lot of teams to play before then, but 
uh, I'll certainly go back there and see some of my old friends, and it'll be a good time. Did your dad give you a team and say, you know, you probably need to be these guys consistently just to be there? No, no. <laughs> All of them, you know, you need to beat them consistently. Uh, I, I really enjoy, we go to these big, big orange caravans, you know, and every, every fan comes up and they only have one team that you want to beat. Coach, I just want you to beat one team. Well, when you add it all up, it'll take you three years to beat everybody they want you to beat. Um, and so that, I mean, they're, they're, every, every game counts. I mean, it really does. And uh, they're all important. Uh, and, you know, our biggest concern right now is getting ready for training camp. Uh, but I think if you just sit there and circle one game on your schedule and that's all you're doing, you're really going to be in for it in some of those other games. Coach, you talk about the expectation for this season, at least for the media and the fans. Maybe it doesn't seem like the kind of excitement or maybe the kind of uh, expectations that you're used to from a Tennessee standpoint. Uh, how do you deal with kind of those lowered expectations? <laughs> I've never had that question. How do you deal with low expectations? I didn't know we had low expectations. Uh, I, you know, the, the one thing that I never do is, is define a number as far as expectations. It always starts with some basic values that you build your program around, along, uh, around intangible values. Uh, discipline, toughness, effort, team spirit. The same thing that most people do. And then, and then we certainly have statistical uh, uh, items that we focus on that impact winning and losing, whether it's turnovers or third down or red area, running the ball, stopping the run, defending the pass, all those things. Uh, and as long as our team plays with those values consistently, and as long as we're showing tremendous progress in making sure we're doing the things we need to do to win a football game, uh, the winning will come. And I have no doubts about that. Uh, and there's so many things that you can't control good and bad, good and bad, that affect an outcome of the game, that as long as we can focus on what we can control, uh, I think we'll win over time. And uh, so as far as the expectations, that's what we put on on our team. Are you tired about uh, being questioned about Brad Brown yet? No, Jimmy Himes is the only guy doing it all the time. And so <laughs> I met with the local media right when I came out, and I threw it out at him first. I, I asked him to give me an update on Bryce. Uh, but there's no new news, surprisingly. We're going into the last week. Uh, he's not on our team and hadn't been on our team since I got the job. Uh, so I don't expect any, any change. You know, what, the reason there's no closure on it is because he's not told me, what, you know, where he wants to go and ask for a release. Uh, but I, I mean, I expect it will happen soon. Better happen. Well, you put the next guy in, you know, and see how he does. And uh, if he doesn't perform well, you go sign another one. Uh, you know, there's not much more you can do. Uh, you never want to lose a guy after signing day because, you know, we would have probably signed another runner. And that's, that's where the organization gets hurt. Uh, not, not necessarily in losing Bryce specifically. It's just losing a roster number. And, and so we'll do the best we can, and we're a little bit thin in a lot of areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, um, I went back to Athens when I was at LSU, and we got strapped pretty good. We were coming off winning the national championship. We had a young team, and they were ready for us. Uh, it's a great place to play. And, uh, I, you know, everybody brings up the Georgia thing, but, you know, I really hadn't – I mean, I left Athens when I was 18, and uh, so – I have a lot of friends down there, and I have friends on the coaching staff. Um, and, but I think that'll be a, a bigger fodder for the fans uh, than it will for me. Uh, it's a great football team and a great coaching staff and a great tradition, and we're going to have our hands full.